Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Shayna Park, your host for Money Talks. My guest today is Brandon Laresco. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Hey, Shayna. Nice to see you again. Thank you for having me back on your show. Thank you for being on. I love having you. Um, for those of you, or for those that don't know you, please uh, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, you know, I've been a part of the financial industry for nearly eight years now. You know, and I'm just excited to be here with a fellow um, Gen Z, you know, young adults who want to be able to educate, you know, all generations so that we can make sure that, hey, finance may be confusing, but it's something that we all got to learn. We work hard. Let's learn how we can manage our own money so that we can also have a very happy, um, you know, healthy life. Yes. Not not um, just our physical well-being, but our financial well-being as well. So I know we're here to discuss about how November is National Long-Term Care Awareness Month. So why is it so important for us to understand this topic? Yeah, so, you know, I want to bring up the first slides. Um, so, you know, you guys know um, that I came on before for different topics, talking about college planning, scholarship, financial aid, even just spreading a, across the national financial literacy campaign that we have here. Um, and in our, in our next slide, we see that, you know, we are always educating across North America. And we have actually, I believe, 700 financial centers all across. And, you know, we're here wanting to educate people, educate the little guy, all the hardworking Americans, and making sure that, hey, you guys can learn with us. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a financial background. We want to make sure that these tools and resources are accessible and you know, easy enough to understand in common language so that all together, you know, we can be successful, that we can um, help one another. And we think that no one is more interested in your financial, um, you know, intentions than you are. No one is more interested in your life than you are. And that is why we want to make sure that we have different workshops available, as well as having it in different languages so that, you know, we can have people attend and learn in their native tongue. Um, but I know Shayna has been awesome being with you, a colleague in this campaign, sharing financial education. And I think, you know, just working alongside you guys, it's amazing to see you grow. And I'm so glad to be on the show so that we can always find a way to educate people and find different platforms to do this. Um, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and I love, you know, doing this alongside with you as well. And before getting myself financially educated, I had no idea what long term care was um how important it is to people so can you elaborate more on that and tell me the misconceptions of how you find long-term care yes i believe you know when we think about health care expenses especially at our age you know maybe 20s um even 30s you know we are probably not familiar with long-term care um but if we bring up the um the next slide that we have we want to talk about the the most common reason for bankruptcy. So we see here that, hey, the most common reason people are filing for bankruptcy is medically related costs. Medically wow. related costs is so high. We know that medical inflation is high. And we wanna think about um, right there, the next line is how much will the average 65 year old couple in retirement will need in medical expenses? And that's a whopping, you know, more than half a million, $600,000. And, you know, a lot of us, we don't spend the time to think about that. Uh, we probably don't have um, the, the firsthand experience or have it from loved ones, but we see that this is a rising problem. It's really, really common, you know, more alongside than just, um, you know, the loss of a job and even divorce, which are other reasons for bankruptcy. But just think about it, just thinking about our healthcare. Our healthcare is the most expensive thing, and that could drive us to such a devastating financial state. Yes, I know. And we need to be, uh, well, as time goes on, right? We hope to be as healthy as we possibly can. But healthcare, like you said, is very important, as well as long term care. So, how would you define what long term care is for people who don't know? So, you know, before we can go into the what long-term care is, you know, we can talk about like the misconceptions that you were addressing earlier. So in our next slide, the misconceptions of how we fund long-term care, 
um, we first automatically think Medicare. Okay, Medicare, that is your health insurance after retirement, or during retirement provided by the federal government. Um, and you know, that's a whole other topic. It is something that you, you earn through credits of working. And really, that fine line is knowing that, hey, Medicare does not cover long-term care expenses. This is including nursing facilities, specialized nursing, custodial care. And we see that why, why is it that so much of us are confused that, you know, long-term care is so expensive and how we're going to pay for it? It's not going to be our Medicare. Is it going to be out of pocket? And, you know, that, that drives us to the next slide. And that's going to be what is long-term care? To understand long-term care, you know, this is the personal and medical, you know, help that you're going to get when you're disabled. And this can happen at any age. And this is from experiencing different um, activities that you can't perform regularly. We call these the six activities of daily living. A few of those is bathing, dressing, eating, and can as well as be um, toileting, transferring, and continence. And, you know, we see that these are simple everyday things that we don't think of. Like today, Shana, what did you do this morning? Um, well, I opened my eyes and next thing I did was roll out of bed to go use the restroom. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just automatic. We go up and we're like, hey, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go up. I'm going to get out of bed. That's one thing. Get out of bed. Maybe get on off the toilet. Um, dress ourselves, feed ourselves breakfast. These are such common everyday things, but you know, it's these little activities that can harm someone's lifestyle, and that contributes to the the high cost to have someone help take care of you. Yes, and I like the points that you just made. Um, you know, earlier about uh, Medicare not covering long term care because. If it's not covered, we know at least in Hawaii, the people who bear the risk of taking care of our elderly or our loved ones are the children. And I don't think it's talked about enough how, you know, not having long-term care or not having something in place financially, that could, you know, be, make a really big impact on the person who's caring for the loved one. So it's very interesting, all the points that you made and, how we take these um, little daily living activities for granted. Um, and I like how you also mentioned too that it doesn't matter what age you are, right? Because can you, I know you know some statistics, you don't have to um, pinpoint exactly, but from what age do people usually qualify for long-term care? So we, without considering the age itself of when you qualify, um, the amount of people who are at least above 18 in long-term care is pretty high. Um, I actually have a friend who worked at this facility in the west side of Oahu. And she was working this facility where it is all children, anyone who is below 18 years old. And these are people who, who can't feed themselves. They can't get up on bed. They're bedridden. And they need that constant care. So it was a very specialized facility. And, you know, these kids come from all different backgrounds of health. Some who are very healthy, you know, had a, had a life where, you know, they're doing, you know, the regular kind of things or the everyday things, but all of a sudden an accident happens, right? Whether it's a car accident, maybe um, an immune disease or health issues arise, and then now they're just like chronically um, disabled and, you know, they need the assistance to carry on. And some even were, were born with this need of assistance to make life a little bit easier. So that is why, you know, I, I strongly feel the importance of why we should prepare for our healthcare expense. Because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know um, our health. We can't promise it tomorrow. So it's best to be prepared and to learn from everyone else so that we can be able to become a little bit more wiser in a way and be more financially peace of mind. Yes. And that's truly our mission too, is to go out there and educate people to put something in place before, you know, something, God forbid, were to ever happen. You're right. And 
I know you have um, a personal story as well that, you know, it's in regarding to long-term care. So Brandon, can you please, you know, tell us more about that? Yeah, so I do have my own story with my family and it was about taking care of our grandma, grandmother. So our grandma, she was in her 80s. She was in her prime. She was still climbing the mango trees, you know, like, like any other grandma, local grandma. She was she was there picking it up, climbing the trees, and she was she was just enjoying life. She was taking me around, touring us around the, the island, riding the bus every day. But all of a sudden, you know, health um, becomes a bigger issue. You know, as we get as we get older, you know, we're close to seeing God. There's some things that we can't do. Um, yeah. She starts to stop walking. Sometimes we need to feed her. And there comes a point where she just couldn't, she just couldn't get around easily. And, you know, we did not know what long-term care is. We didn't have the money for it. So being, you know, being a big family, lots of relatives, we each took a turn. Each family, each of her grandchildren took a turn to take care of her every day of the week. And this was probably ongoing for a few years, a few years of us doing this. And I think there's a couple of things we must con consider. You know, yes, we have our loved ones. We love them dearly and we want to be able to help them. But what about the opportunity it takes away to make money? Yeah. The opportunity to earn so that we can sustain our lifestyle. Some of us who has to now stop working, even I have a friend, um, he's in his mid 30s. He had to stop working because I had to take care of the dad. And, you know, I think these are not issues that are not common or it is common. You know, it's not like we have not heard about this. We probably see it. And some of us, we don't even know that some of our friends are doing this for their loved ones right now. Yes. No, and I, your story is what many of our peers and colleagues experience as well, or they know someone who is taking care of a loved one. Um, and thank you for sharing my my mom she worked in a dental office and she worked with older patients and she always talked about you know um just seeing different caregivers come in taking care of um the patients or it could be their loved ones and it's interesting to see how you know she said that they probably didn't know that they would be taking care of their parents or their loved ones but it just happened and it's it's just a lack of financial planning. And it's not, it's no one's fault because for me too, I, I was completely unaware of what long-term care was and how important it was. However, I was aware of, okay, my family members, they have been taking care of my grandma before. And it's just something that's what we know, right? So um, Brandon, can you tell us, you know, how do you qualify for long-term care? So that is the ways to qualify. We just need to make sure one big thing, can you qualify and you need assistance in two of the six activities of daily living. So activities of daily living being again, bathing, eating, dressing, toileting, transferring continence. Continence being that, can you control your bladder? Toileting is, can you even get on and off the toilet? So I remember I asked, asked a couple of the things that I had to do is, you know, I was only in sixth grade, but I was already um, not only feeding my grandma, I was showering her. I was making sure I can help wipe her to, you know, still maintain a clean body after each meal. So that, that is the ways you can qualify. There's a couple other ways um, that, you know, can that people can take the time to learn about. And I think we just want to talk about maybe the average cost. Yeah, so, let's hear about yeah. that. So we have the next slide here. Um, the next slide we have is the average cost. And if we were to say this, this is, um, sorry, I had an error on my slide on my part. This is the, the cost of care itself, not Medicare. So cost of care, you know, we can see that there's different types of facilities, different ways that we can, um, we can get care from adult care center, homemaker services, home health aid, all the way to nursing home. Let's say the cheapest one. What do you see as the cheapest form of care? Uh, cheapest form of care looks like the first one, right? Adult. Yes. 
adult daycare center, and that is going to be $17,000, but that does not mean that they are able to take care of them 24-7. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're going to have, you know, a, a shuttle come by, pick up your loved one, take care of them for, for a couple hours in the day, then drop them back home, or you have to arrange the services to get them there. Um, you know, we also want to consider how do people want to get taken care of? Do people want to go to a daycare center? If they have the power and the the money to choose, what do you think is the most common um, option? Probably um, a nursing home. Yeah, a nursing home is great. That, that's, a great that's actually one way to say, hey, I don't. I want to make sure I get the best quality service. I'm going to go to a nursing home, and that's one way. Another common way is, hey, I'm going to have a homemaker come in. I'm going to have a caregiver come to my house, and I'm going to live in the place that I lived in for X amount of years, and we're going to pay them that X amount. That's going to be anything from like $30,000, $40,000. all depends on where we live and where we want care. Because this is the national average, but I think this does not showcase the most recent number, today's number, as well as being in Hawaii, right? Because, um, but we do have viewers from all all over on on your show, and I'm glad to hear us share the campaign with so many. And that's why you want to consider, hey, what is the starting point that we can start gauging from, so that we can understand, okay, where can we where can we work off from? Um, I think one last point I want to make from that slide is the the last one, which is a more specialized private nursing facility or nursing room. You know, some of us we can't t- we can't foretell how severe our um, our medical life is going to be, our health. So if it's too severe, you may need that constant custodial care, that constant eye. Maybe you need to be in bed all day. You need to have an IV drip. Um, so many different things to consider, and that that starts to cost a lot of money. Some places, you know, I know we were helping someone in another state, and we see it was like I believe ten thousand, even more, for a room in Alaska, right? Mm-hmm. And I and this is crazy to see, you know, how how much it's gonna be. You know, not everyone has the amount of rooms of nursing homes available and do we have the money to even you know get that caregiver to get that nursing home that we need yeah and well the average cost of long-term care is insane because for one right if we don't plan in advance it the most expensive i think goes up to a hundred thousand that's a lot for someone to pay on an annual basis very suddenly because long-term care or a person who goes on claim for long-term care it doesn't happen gradually it possibly can but it can also happen suddenly so for the provider or the loved one who wants to make sure this person is in the best situation possible that's a lot of money to come up with right and then on the other hand is if we you know fail to plan then it costs us our time if we become the full-time caregiver. So it's very interesting the the power of knowledge and how far this can get you and how knowing more can cost you a lot less, right? I think um, in Hawaii, when we were discussing or having a conversation a few weeks ago, um, a private room is close to 130,000. Do you remember seeing something like that when we were talking about it? Yes, yes. You know, we sometimes it's um it's not just a matter of medicine and facilities available. Sometimes is that can you you're gonna be living here for a while, right? The average person in long term care can be about three to five years. So you might be considering, do I want my own room? Do I want to have a lot of neighbors nearby so I have um, people to to talk with? But also, um, it's like, do I want that nice view? Like they want to have that care home with a great window view, um, and on the mountains. And I've seen that. We I have family who works there, who works at a nursing facility, um, up in the heights, and they see a great view. Like it's so beautiful to come in, and and it's and it's these little things that that help make your life feel better, right? Making sure we can 
have something that your loved one will feel happy to be in and just making sure that they have the right care for them. Yes. So Brandon, what are some ways that a person can get long-term care or how can a person even go about um, trying to, you know, get that in place for themselves? Long-term care, there is the traditional um, long-term care insurance and that's a standalone. So that is commonly, um, you know, commonly in the marketplace in these past years and we see people will be getting this policy but in return they pay for it monthly but not everyone's going to need long-term care a high majority of us will be in it but not everyone will use it and that's where it comes where you know standalone they pay for it but if they don't use it they lose the money mm, so, so that's why we see nowadays there there is hybrid policies there are protection plans, life insurances, they have riders and added benefits for the purpose of long-term care. There mm -hmm. can even be asset leverage accounts so that they can find ways to grow their money and be able to make it last longer as maybe a lifetime long-term care. And there's so many ways that people could fund it. It's the matter of are we going to start considering and looking at these today? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we really know how expensive it is. So imagine how late you start planning. The later you start to plan for it and you push it back, the more money you got to put down to prepare for this. But we see low-cost plans where you can get this as an added benefit for someone our age. And it's it's great. Yeah, you can start a, You can find a way to start this at maybe like, $20 a day and work your way up so that you are able to have peace of mind that, hey, if you do need long-term care, it's available for, for you for the next couple of years. Yes. But there are different ways that we can look at payments and funding. I like how you just mentioned that $20 a day because even $10 a day, that's $300 a month. And when we were discussing the cost of long-term care or even say home private room, in a nursing um, home, assuming it's a hundred thousand, and you're staying in that nursing um, room for maybe five, six years, it's around six hundred thousand. So I would say investing, you know, ten dollars a day towards my future is definitely worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes that hey, this is not a user or user plan. Is that if you need it, it's available, but are there other ways so that it's a little bit more flexible? Yes. And I know, you know, we'll probably hear more from you about those different plans. <laughs> Definitely. You know, actually, this reminds me of a case that we were just talking about. We just saw on the news, um, one of the local news channels, they were sharing a case about their loved one. Have you seen, do you remember that case we were talking about earlier? I remember, yes. Um, a family traveled to, I believe it was Korea. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they were actually, um, so this is a family, the Ruan family. There is a daughter of a 63-year-old Hawaii man, and they're facing tens of thousands of dollars worth of medical bills. And this is where they see that their dad, they were flying him to China because he hadn't seen family in a while. And it was during his layover from China to Hawaii, he was at Korea. In Korea... Um, had an emergency, emergency during a layover in Korea, with, which has left him stuck in the ICU overseas. And this, they see that, you know, he was battling pneumonia and is relying on the ventilator to breathe right now. Um, he does have, like, Medicaid, but, you know, the issue is this is outside of the U.S. So, you know, they're facing, um, they're facing the ICU right now at a cost of about $3,000 a day. Wow. And, you know, this also doesn't um, consider all the other expenses that they may have just to fly him over after. You know, I believe you're reading out flying him over could be ten thousands of dollars to make sure that he's not only getting a ticket, but he has the right medical care and equipment with him. Yes. So at the end of the day, you know, medical costs is very expensive. And 
what I'm hearing from you and the conversation we're having is that we never know what's going to happen. So it's important to plan and just plan ahead. Right. And I know um, we were going to discuss to some personal stories that we have um, as well, but it's just very interesting of, you know, how money and it's sad, but so true to say, but money can make a significant difference in the comfort of an individual during, you know, some rough times. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes back to our last show together where we talk about our financial foundation. It's the matter that can we properly build wealth, you know, a certain way that yes, we can start saving and investing in the long run for our future. But if you don't take the time to, to prioritize the proper protection and event of health, um, sickness, premature death, and even just looking at how can I handle my debts, make sure I get that to zero, make sure I have enough savings, emergency fund, because um, we just need to know that, hey, long-term care is going to cover the long-term services, but what are you going to cover right away? Or do we have that savings available? Do we have money readily available and in different places so that we can leverage our accounts and be able to supplement our lifestyle? So, you know, I thank you again, Shayna, for having me here. And I'm glad that we could talk about, you know, the long-term care in respect to being the awareness month for November. And these are some tough conversations to have at times. You know, this isn't the most sexiest topic in the world, <laughs> but it is the inevitable. And it's something that, you know, could greatly affect, you know, someone in our life and someone you may know, maybe a friend or a colleague, you know, some, some of their loved ones in their life. And I know personally for me, you know, um, my family was personally affected with something very sudden and tragic, which had happened to my sister. And I'm very grateful for the knowledge and education, um, you know, that was given to our family because, you know, when my sister was in a very intense situation where she needed intense care, you know, the doctor told us it's going to be very expensive. And I was so, so grateful that, you know, my mom said, it's okay, we can, we can handle any costs that comes our way because my mom, you know, planned in advance for us. So, you know, I'm sure my mom, when she did go ahead and plan in advance, it wasn't because she expected anything to happen, but just knowing why it's important to plan ahead. So, you know, I'm very, very grateful for that. And if anything, and this whole entire conversation and topic and National Long-Term Care Awareness Month, it has taught me that it can happen to anyone. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for being on our show. I really, really appreciate your time, your knowledge, and always be willing to have, you know, these tough conversations. <laughs> oh, thank you, Shayna. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes, thank you so much. I hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shana Park, a Gen Z inspiring lives and liberties. Thank you.